To start off the day, there was a big puddle near the Baker tank. Once again, the whitewater tanker kept busy spreading the Cougar Mountain runoff. There appears to be a foundation wall coming out from the first to be constructed north-south foundation wall. See the first photo with a yellow arrow pointing towards the new wall. There is some kind of symbiosis between the city of Issaquah on SR 900 and the school district in Cornerstone. Maybe the SR 900 guys needed just a small amount of a certain kind of gravel. Lynn says she's seen them taking a few green drainage pipes from here down to the SR 900 crew. The second photo shows the Talus Drive SR 900 intersection where some kind of utilities are being worked. The two trucks are concrete cutting experts. That often means correcting a mistake. I have noticed that both the inside and outside of the foundation walls are getting a good coating of tar-like goop. Why the inside is being tarred, I don't know. This evening there was a gathering of the bigwigs. Again, I don't know who. Does anybody know who these three people are? Rumor has it that the big poor will occur tomorrow at the vault, 400 cubic yards, and at the northeast corner of the classrooms, another 150 yards. This pour will again be foundation. The classroom walls have yet to be formed. As advertised, the big pour happened again. The first two photos show the pour at the classroom footings using the one blue boom, and the pour at the rainwater storage vault with the two green booms. Lynn counted the arrival of almost 50 concrete mixer trucks. The driveway on the east side of the vault looks like it is getting ready for paving, but I don't know why I think that. This project has a long way to go, till fall 2021, before anything is paved. Things were back to normal this morning. The Raptor excavator was back doing one of its favorite things, breaking up boulders or large lumps of old concrete. Look closely at the head in the first two photos. The third picture is of the new stormwater vault. The forms were peeled off like a new bug coming out of its chrysalis. Other happenings include the second Baker tank being removed from the site. Could it be that the vault is that close to being operational? The orange Hitachi excavator also left the premises today. It had been there since day one. The workday started as usual, but then there was a meeting of two of small groups to talk about, I have no idea, because this was a little different, I took a picture. The second picture is included here just because there are two workers who appear to be standing on one leg. Zoom in. The third picture is the new rainwater vault. It is getting a roll of tar paper wrapped around it. That's to prevent water from getting inside. Wait a minute. That's what it's there for. It's there to collect storm water. The fourth picture is of one of the form panels being hoisted into place. It may have come from use on the vault. I was happy to see the forms for the bus lane curbs put in place today. That's the last of the five picks. If the curb forms are in place, can the street or driveway lanes be far behind? Hope not. We were happy to see the curb forms being put in place late yesterday. We were even happier to see them come right in and pour the concrete into the forms most of the day. The forms came off this afternoon. I had the urge to go down and carve my initials in the still moist concrete. Another first today was seeing the two halves of the classrooms building start to be joined by the straight line of footings. The arrows in the second photo indicate a line of footings going from the north to the south. There will no longer be any driving of vehicles through this area. The second photo is a good shot of the curb crew in action, making the solid curb and gutter out of almost nothing. 
I could not resist taking a picture of the curbs and gutter crew in action. And then there were all the white vehicles that went with the curbs and gutters crew. The six pickup did not show in that shot. Since it was the last day of a long week and most of the workers had gone home, it seemed to be a good time to straighten up the hardware store. The last photo shows a neater, better looking work site with an amazing amount of hardware that is all going to become a middle school. I believe the most important event today was the start of the process of filling dirt in around the storm water vault. The photo shows this taking place. It looks like they will have a hard time finding enough dirt on site to do this. The boom with the Seahawks label came today to help pour the footings on the east side of the classrooms. The photo shows it being supplied with slurry from two mixers. I have been remiss not to include more photos of what's happening in the northwest corner of the property. Thanks to Patty Fuque for her shot of all the small buildings and offices located there. The other major work activity was a continuation of building up the dirt level south of the water vault. They were working on manholes today. The first photo shows that. The second photo shows how they tend to stabilize big cranes without outrigger struts. They add weights to the flatbed that the crane is attached to. However, the inconvenience of having to have large flatbed truck and trailer follow you around with weights would seem to kill that idea in favor of outriggers. Zoom, now that's a popular word, in on both photos to see the details. They may be getting a large portion of the bus lanes ready for paving. However, if they do pave, now they will be covering up the manhole that was put in on July 15th. See the last photo. Two wishes come true. I wish that the bus lanes would soon be paved and that the stormwater vault storage would get a roof. The pre-paving was soon started, but sort of fizzled out. My concern about paving over a particular manhole is postponed. It looks like this first paving phase will stop short of the manhole. The first photo was taken right after work was started this morning. The second photo shows several tasks happening at the same time. One is the roughly 100 pre-stressed slabs delivered by the Ford 240-ton crane. Well, that's from the flatbed to the roof. The extra long flatbed trailers had trouble maneuvering around all the hardware and vehicles. The third picture shows the near complete vault. Now for some rainwater. Two manholes have been added to the far side of the vault. Incidentally, there is now a very small creek going from under the bus lanes off to the south. The fourth photo shows the crane all folded up and headed out after quitting time. It reminds me of a mobile medium-range ballistic missile on a transporter. That's from back to the Minuteman days at Boeing.